Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to this special edition in which we are basically breaking down a very popular recent uh, debate discussion that happened on the Thought Adventure podcast between Jake, Sharif and Abdul with Aaron Ra. And um, we thought it'd be a brilliant idea to bring, you know, the brothers on and just talk about what happened because, you know, I was certainly enjoying it. It was it was a Ramadan treat. It was Eid before Eid. And uh, so with me are today the brothers, Jake, Abdul and Yusuf. Assalamualaikum, guys. Wa alaikum wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullah. So it's great to be live with you guys. In fact, I think it's the first time with Abdul and Jake. So tell me, brothers, you know, this, this, it is an adventure. It is a thought adventure. And, I, and it was a very interesting sort of uh, discussion. So what was the purpose behind inviting Aaron Ra to this podcast? Yeah, so the purpose of inviting Aaron on is because, as people may know, he's a popular YouTuber, uh, you know, big in the atheist community. And uh, we, we felt that he needed to be addressed. So we, we invited him on to have a discussion about the necessary being, whether or not a necessary being exists. And we brought him into the discussion. We knew going into it that he wasn't really equipped for the conversation. But to be honest, that was part of it anyway, to demonstrate that although this guy is very popular and has a big following on the internet amongst atheists, he really doesn't have much of a clue of what he's talking about. Yeah, yeah. I, I think from that perspective, the objective was met. It was yeah. very, very clear. So, um, Abdul, you know, during the discussion, um, I mean, even if even if somebody had it on mute and they were just watching it, you could just see his posture crumble, his yeah. certainty. You know, he's running out of sound sound bites. He's running out of these little remarks that he makes and you could just tell that he just looked very uncomfortable so i mean did you was that planned or was that just something that it just naturally went in and in that he he just looked like he was getting cornered and he didn't really know what he's talking about no, i mean yeah the, the idea wasn't just like entirely to corner him it was more to break his epistemology down and understand where he's coming from with regard to his stance on the existence of God. And maybe the reason he felt very uncomfortable is because it doesn't normally go like that. Normally, he tries putting people on the back foot, asking them for evidence, not really understanding what the standard or criteria for evidence is. So yeah. so we, we sort of wanted to start it like, okay, we know you're going to ask us for evidence. So right now, we want to start with some kind of common ground, break down your epistemology for us, tell us what counts as evidence as far as this question is concerned. And I guess he's just not used to that kind of philosophical breakdown of his position. Yeah, he's definitely uh, uncomfortable. And I think breaking down ep his epistemology was the right route of doing things because normally, like you said, it, it is him just saying, well, where's your evidence? Well, where's your evidence? Well, that's not evidence. And that's usually a summary of his debates. Yusuf, you weren't actually there. And I was, uh, and, you know, uh, I, I think you would have contributed well, but maybe, you know, you can tell us why you were missing an action. Yeah, so I've seen his videos before. And I've seen, there's one in particular, he was debating IP, uh, I can't remember his name. And yeah, he's, he's like a Christian um, Michael, Michael Jones, yeah, philosophy. That's the one. And uh, I, I've seen him too often sort of, he, he sort of throws his weight about, he, he gets irate and he just starts shouting. And <laughs> obviously with it being Ramadan, I just, I was hoping, I, was, I did try to get them to sort of arrange it for after Ramadan. Um, and I wanted to get involved with it if it was after Ramadan because they got it sorted beforehand. Um, yeah. I didn't want to really jump on it. And not only that, I was sort of on my way as well to meet some friends. Uh, so I was on a bus. And uh, I don't think my contribution being on the, the 471 <laughs> would have, yeah. would have uh, added to it at all. But yeah, no, alhamdulillah, it, was, uh, it turned out like a really good discussion. At the beginning, um, it sort of went downhill with his typical sort of throw his weight around sort of thing there was a moment where um abdul rahman had a back and forth with him and he was saying you you're constantly misrepresenting me you're constantly misrepresenting me and uh and i've i've told you why you've misrepresented several times blah, 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 blah. and then abdul rahman was like listen sorry that's not my aim here just tell me what it is i've, I've misrepresented you on and if if it is a misrepresentation i'll apologize and i'll take it back that's not what i want to do and he's like i uh uh I, I, I don't take notes. It's like, bro, you, you're saying that this happened only moments ago. 
Like, if you can't even remember what you're being misrepresented on, how can you be so sure you're being misrepresented? Yeah. Like, to be so confident and cocky with that outburst, because he was getting riled up in that moment, and I was like, this is it. He's he's It's going downhill. And then, alhamdulillah, the way the brothers reacted to it, they were very calm. They kept their cool. Um, I I'm, I can get a bit grumpy when I'm hungry. So, I, I, <laughs> I, you know, may Allah bless them for the, the composure throughout it. And Alhamdulillah, they managed to keep control of the, the conversation. And from what I know, I didn't watch all the way through. I think I got about a halfway mark. Um, but the last half seemed to be much more um, civil from what I've heard. Um, and inshallah, I'm going to do a full review with Abdullah Andalusi at some point after the weekend. Um, he's, yeah. I'm just waiting for him to let me know when he's free. And so I'll, I'll get to watch it all at that point. I'm in two minds whether I want to watch it all beforehand or just get some sort of uh, fresh approach. On a review, but mashallah. And there was another thing as well. One of the, the major reasons we wanted to do this. Uh, so there's a recent revert on our channel um, who took his shahada with us. And Aaron Ra was like aiming at him basically. And he was trying to get him to come onto his show. Um, and it, yeah, it was, it was, he was basically, he was trying to take advantage of his sort of uh, position in the atheist community and his, uh, what, what would you call it? His, um, Status. You know, the, yeah, his status, the awe that people have about him. Uh, and he was trying to get this person to come on. Um, and Alhamdulillah, I think this obviously really undermined any sort of authority that he he tries to uh, give off to people. Yeah. The brother, brother smashed him. Mashallah. Yeah, Alhamdulillah. Um, you know, it, it was good that the brothers were very like calm and they were like, okay, so fine, you got this issue. So tell us about this, tell us about that. And I felt, I mean, it'd be nice if Sharif was here, but I really liked how ev how everybody was playing their role in just getting him to go down a certain route. And uh, in the end, he just looked like, he looked like he had regret in his mind that, okay, why did, why did I enter this lines then? So we're going to play the clip now and uh, we're just going to discuss it briefly. Hold on, hold ridiculous. on, Abdul, please. So... What I'm, what I'm saying, Arn, is that we, we were trying to build an argument for the necessary being. You agreed to the principle of sufficient reason. So we're, we're on the same page there. Then what we're trying to explain is we have all these different things that we experience in reality that are contingent, that require an explanation for them outside of themselves. Mm -hmm. And so the question is, do we get to a bedrock thing that is necessary that explains all these other contingent facts or do we just keep going on ad infinitum with all these different contingent beings the only two really possible options at this point is to say well there has to be some sort of necessary being that is the grounds and explains all these other contingent facts or we just keep adding on more and more contingent facts ad infinitum and we don't really get anywhere yeah. so Matter and energy are eternal, never created, and then we don't have this problem at all. But then you would say, but then you would say that matter and energy in that case would be necessary, and then you have a necessary being. It just happens to be matter and energy, right? The reason being that it's not possible for there to be absolutely nothing. Well, but I'm saying even in that equation, if you rejected an infinite regress and you said, well, the thing that's eternal is this matter and energy. Well, the question is, is that matter and energy that's eternal, is it necessary or is it a contingent fact? If you say that it's contingent, then it needs an explanation out of its, outside of itself. Or if you say that it's necessary, then you agree with us that there is something that is necessary. You just think that it's matter and energy. And then we could have a discussion about that. Okay. So, okay. I mean, which one of those options would you at this point, would you go with, would you say that you think matter and energy is eternal, but doesn't have to be necessary. And then we still have to figure out, well, what if it's necessary, that the only thing that makes it necessary is that it's not possible for there to be absolutely nothing. At least I don't think it's possible for there to be absolutely nothing. And that impossibility would make the existence of something necessary. And right. okay. none, of it, so, none I mean, of it is relevant. To what we're well, no, no, it is. It is because we're using, as we described in the beginning, what being was. Um, we're we're not 
restricting it to this sort of God with consciousness and all that yeah. stuff. We're not adding that baggage into the equation. We should. But, we can, we, we oh, can oh, have yeah, another conversation yeah, about that. We, we could. We could. But before you go, I want to be clear on where we're leaving off. At this point, to me, it seems like you're agreeing that there is something necessary by the fact that you're saying you don't think that there could ever be absolutely nothing. And if that thing that is necessary is something like matter and energy or some configuration of it, then that in terms of philosophy would be a necessary being in that respect. We would disagree with that, but at least we would agree that there is something that is necessary. And then we could have a further discussion about which model best describes what should actually be considered necessary and what shouldn't. Again, I don't I don't deal with physics at all. And I know that Sean Carroll, although I would have said that it's impossible for there to be nothing, I know that Sean Carroll said that it is conceptually possible for there to be absolutely nothing. And so with that being the case, that means that matter and energy, if never created, are not necessarily necessary. So but, you, but you would disagree with Sean. Uh, yeah, that was um especially the last part. That was a bit of a weird defense. I mean, he brought in Sean Carroll and Do we disagree? It didn't help it. <laughs> it was yeah. just it was, it was I mean just he contrasts Yeah, he contrasted his view with Sean Carroll's because he said, I don't think it's possible for there to be absolutely nothing. That impossibility makes the existence of something absolutely necessary. And then when we when I basically explain the implications of that, you're admitting a necessary being. He kind of goes to Sean Carroll, but he says, Sean Carroll says this, and I don't agree with him. <laughs> As if that's going to help him. I mean, it, it doesn't make any sense. Yeah, and it was very much like, I felt it was like, hmm, how shall I buy some time? Let me just chuck in something which is neither here nor there. Like, I was, <laughs> I was just like, well, okay, that doesn't make any sense. Clearly doesn't make any sense. Yeah. Um, yeah, I was, just... I was often getting the feeling as well that he didn't really understand what was meant by necessary because there was that other moment as well a bit earlier on when uh, I can't remember was it Jake was it you you, you said something about the necessary yeah. being and yeah. then he's like no it's not the necessary being it's just that it can't be any other way it's like yeah. bro that's what necessary <laughs> means yeah. yeah I was like dude that's what necessary means and and the other thing was he didn't yeah. even understand what being meant he thought being was because Sharif actually asked him at one point he said, do you know what we mean by necessary being? And he's like, no. Well, dude, why are you on why the stream? On stream why are you it? coming on the stream to have a it's debate hard. about if there's a necessary being and you don't even know what a necessary <laughs> being is? I mean, it's absurd. And the fact that people in, in the hundreds of thousands, atheists would be following this guy as some kind of um, you know person to be followed is just ridiculous. I mean... Even atheists, I got plenty of messages from them online afterwards. They think that the guy just got completely destroyed. I mean, he looked kind of silly, like a fool. So it, it's just amazing that somebody would approach a discussion and, and didn't even know what the title of the discussion implied. I mean, it's just absurd. And just to push on this as well, by the way, it's not like he didn't know. So Abdul Rahman, when you were messaging him on Facebook... It's not like you were saying, hey, why don't we just have this random conversation? We're not going to tell you what it's no. about. You made no, he, it very he, he, clear. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, so I, the first message I sent him was like, we're going to have a discussion on the existence of God. And and he knew later on, like many days before the stream, that, okay, this is the title of the stream. I think we, I think we, uh, we put the link up there about a week before uh, yeah. the event and he yeah. got the link and he knew it was there a uh, discussion about uh, sorry the existence of a necessary being but the problem is that you know you can be philosophically unequipped you, you know philosoph philosophy doesn't have to be your area and and a lot of people are kind of saying this i've seen pe people online saying well you guys called him in and philosophy isn't his, his area well it's fine if philosophy isn't his area but if it's not okay if he built his entire career on critiquing a philosophical subject 
when he knows no philosophy. Yeah. So, so, so that exactly. that's the issue here. And I think what we wanted to point out uh, at a certain point during the discussion was that, I mean, wait a second, this guy is very, very popular in atheist circles, especially amongst like internet atheists. Uh, of course, there are philosophically savvy atheists out there, and and there are uh, atheist academics out there who are m way more sophisticated than Arn Ra. But I think the idea here is that this charge that uh, internet atheists very frequently, uh, uh, um, you know, uh, uh, throw at theists in the sense that you guys don't know what you're talking about. You're just blindly following uh, uh, certain public figures who are misrepresenting science and philosophy. It's it's equally applicable to certain atheist figures, right? Yeah. And and this is a perfect example of somebody who has a huge following and who makes a living out of critiquing not it's not just like young earth creationism or something that he's critiquing from a purely scientific perspective no he in the beginning of the debate made it very clear that a necessary being doesn't exist i mean he even came in with that t-shirt t-shirt yeah, yeah, yeah. no god exists <laughs> that's a philosophical <laughs> statement so i mean it, i think a lot of people uh, out there who are saying that you know philosophy isn't his area need to be very clear on okay maybe we should reconsider uh, listening to this guy about the very philosophical topics he talks about, because all he talks about is basically philosophy. Yeah, there was also a point in the stream where he was even talking about he thinks philosophy can be good and that it should be taught in schools and blah blah blah. blah. And he he said so, and then he said, but there's a lot of philosophy gets misused. How on earth is he going to be able to know that if he doesn't consider <laughs> good, good himself point. philosophically savvy? Very and important. so yeah. so he makes that point he make he opens it up as if yeah no i've got an understanding of philosophy i know what good philosophy and bad philosophy is and then he gets absolutely wasted and then at the end of it in the comments and in the you know the the chats after the the discussion he's going on like you know i philosophy isn't my field i don't know anything about philosophy and it's like bro you're putting on completely different personas here than what you were during yeah. the discussion and the 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 sheer confidence he, he was talking as if he was justified in being a positive atheist, atheism proper, not just this agnostic atheism. Oh, I'm not sure. You just can't prove to me that God exists. No, he was making the positive claim that God almost certainly doesn't exist. And he might not even have said almost. Well, I can't even remember now. Was he... Did he give the, the soft quantifier almost, or did he, was he going in with no, that? No, he said it was impossible. He said it was impossible. Yeah. yeah. So he's he's going from this sort of hard claim to being shown of his ignorance of a particular subject, even though he's putting on this persona and this aura of, oh, you know, I know what good philosophy is and I know when it's being misused and blah, 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 blah. And then demonstrates he completely misuses philosophy himself. Yeah. And then try to escape that by talking like, oh, it's not my field. You shouldn't have gotten me on here. As if it was some sort of sneaky ploy. Yeah. Oh, you know, the, the drowning Kruger effect really comes into play here, right? So you have somebody who is ignorant about a subject and then they're confident and then they are coming across because the way he was trying to come across is that you guys didn't know what you guys were talking about yeah. or you're misrepresenting him or that, you know, he was the authority here. And I think that that goes to show a lot that you can be you can make a career out of pure ignorance and confidence. That's what you're talking about? Yeah, yeah, Ign definitely. ignorance and confidence. He's yeah. usually very confident, but I didn't even realize it. Subhanallah! Actually, when I watched because I watched the stream back a second time after it was live, and especially towards the end where we had been building for those people who didn't watch the whole stream, I suggest you watch the whole thing. We were kind of building up this argument for necessary being step by step. And I came in towards the end, breaking down the argument, where we started, where we are at now and telling him what the implications were. And if you watch his face, <laughs> when I'm actually making the argument, he looks visibly uncomfortable. Like yeah. he doesn't at all look confident. And at one point when I, get to the kind of uh, the punchline of, of the necessary being, he literally throws his hand up in the air. He goes like this and says, okay. Like he, he doesn't know what to say. And, and then he actually explicitly admits that there is a necessary being in, in the clip that we, you know, we played for everybody. Whereas in the beginning, he said, no, in fact, there's no necessary being and it's impossible for there to be a necessary being. And then by the end of it, he, he looks so uncomfortable throws his hands up in the air and says okay i guess there is something that's necessary so yeah. it's just it's just amazing to me that um p people 
can follow a person who I'm, I'm sorry to say is so inept philosophically and makes a whole career out of it. And then afterwards on social media, he says to me, and I wish we had more time, but he said to me, well, why are you guys basically inviting me on for this? You, you know that my area is, is science and evolution and this type of thing. It's like, dude, the question of, of whether or not God exists is a metaphysical question. It's a philosophical yeah. question. Your entire thing, your atheism and your claim that no God exists and all this other stuff that you're talking about, this is philosophy, bro. If, if you're not ready to talk about it, don't come on a stream. And when you knew what the discussion was going to be, it's not like we said, oh, Arn, you're coming on to debate evolution. And then we switched the topic. No, you knew what the topic was. You came yeah. on. And you had a certain confidence maybe in the beginning with about five minutes in, you know, the guy was completely uh, uncomfortable. And then afterwards, you try to backtrack and say, well, it's not my area. It, it doesn't work like that, man. You came yeah. in confident and you got embarrassed. It's not our problem. That's your problem. I mean, when it, when it comes to his area, I think Sabur uh, dealt with him pretty well a couple of years ago. <laughs> I saw that video. It went all over the place. And and Brother Sabur was, was uh, uh, he, I mean, he kind of dismantled his position uh, uh, very well there from the from the scientific perspective and from the angle of like the philosophy of science but but uh, but then again this is the idea that you can't really you're saying it's not your area you can't really critique uh, uh, religion or 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 the existence of god from a purely scientific perspective without involving philosophy it's just not possible you can involve science of course but it's just mm -hmm. not possible to make a purely scientific critique of uh, of 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 the idea of of god's existence and and uh, something else he he tried to do is he tried to shift the goalpost several times uh, it's clear that the discussion is about like a stage one cosmological argument about whether a necessary being exists not about the characteristics of the necessary yeah. being and, yeah, and i'll just, want just to explain jump just explain yeah. what necessary being in that context means for the audience because they might not understand it yeah so a, a necessary being is a being that couldn't have not existed or a being that couldn't have been otherwise in terms of metaphysical necessity but it's basically a being uh, that must have existed and being here doesn't necessitate sentience or consciousness or any of that being is just something that exists right uh, uh, and and uh, he didn't really understand this in the beginning because and this is a common uh, error that a lot of internet atheists do you would expect someone who's very popular and who makes a career out of critiquing religion to understand what necessary being means in philosophical terms but 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 he didn't unfortunately and and he tried to shift the goalpost when 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 sharif was done and right before jake came in towards the end i i, I explained to him a certain form of the contingency argument from like the set of all contingent things and his response was, was well you jump from that to magical sky being or something yeah, like that yeah, yeah. And, and then i was like i was like i don't want you jumping around like well, we're trying to get somewhere that's not the topic of the discussion if you want us to get to the actual like uh, omni properties and other attributes of god and why we believe that this necessary being must be god we must first arrive at the conclusion that a necessary being exists otherwise it's pointless and it's it's always that you know this shifting of the goalpost is is is, is an easy way to get out of uh, mm -hmm. a, a, a problem but uh, alhamdulillah, we didn't really let him do that. So uh, yeah, yeah. So just, just to highlight on what you said there, so people really need to understand that there are steps that need to be taken in order to get to the eventual conclusion, which is Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala is the the true God. And what the, what we do is we, like you say, you take stage one, which is the first step state, and that's the the existence of a necessary being. Not saying about the qualities that it has or its attributes or anything like that. Just simply that there is the, a kind of being. That exists necessarily that is its non-existence is impossible it has to exist yeah. and then from there once that argument is concluded you can move to stage two which is the second step which then talks about what are the possible attributes or qualities that this being may have and then after that once you've established its qualities and attributes you can say well which religion here is talking about this being which one fits the criteria yeah. more perfectly than others and what they'll do is like you just said there you'll be talking about the first step and they'll say oh, well, you just jump from here to this at the end. It's like, no, 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 we're not. You're doing that now in that critique. We're still on stage one. Once we've established this, we'll take the necessary steps in order to get to that position. We're not going to jump to it. That's the whole point of this conversation. And for, for you to just start making that assertion is guilty of what it's accusing you of doing, Yeah, making the jump.
And you know what's powerful about um, the way that these type of uh, new atheists and internet atheists sort of argue is that they always shift the discussion to something that they're comfortable with. And because of the way that they conduct themselves, the, the opponent usually just falls for the trap and says, oh, well, okay, we're talking about being and, you know, but you're, you're really going to your sky god, aren't you? Well, we don't believe in a sky god and you just fall for the trap. And this happens a lot. So he was simply scanning the situation and saying, okay, what am I comfortable with? I'm comfortable with mocking God. I'm comfortable with talking about the attributes of God. So let me just run away to that. But you guys kept dragging him back. Exactly. Yeah, he, he's uh... yeah. Captain yeah. of the Red Herring. That's what, that's what needs to be done. People need to realize that when you're discussing a certain topic, don't let people go off on tangents. You need to bring them back to the topic of the discussion because that's that's a very it's a very um, deceptive tactic. And I don't mean to be I don't mean to, I don't mean to pick on Aaron. I actually I actually appreciate his his approach to the discussion. To be honest, <laughs> I I was expecting it. I was afraid it was going to turn into like a, th a shouting match or something. But I appreciate his approach to the discussion. I appreciate him coming on. But then, oftentimes it's it's just very easy to when you're getting cornered and when you you know when you're when you realize you're going to concede to a very important point. In this case, it was the entire discussion he was conceding to. Uh, he shifting the goalposts is very easy to do, and you just sort of yeah. ridic ridiculing yeah. God is you just, you just basically divert the attention elsewhere. And there's a, there's a follow-up tactic to that as well. So that if you don't allow them to like you f utilize these red herrings, this, Oh, look at that over there. Woo. Check, you know, that like move your attention to something irrelevant to the subject. If you try to bring it back, they try to make it seem as if you're avoiding the question yep. by trying to take control. No, we're on a yeah. path here. We're talking about a very particular subject. If you want to start going on about something irrelevant that does not have anything to do with the conversation we're currently having now and derails it completely, my bringing it back, again, it's, it's the exact same thing. It's, it ends up them being guilty of the thing they're accusing you of. They yeah. utilize the red herring. You try to get the conversation back on track. They accuse you of avoiding answering their questions and of utilizing red herrings when in reality you're having the conversation that you're there to have. And right. if, he's, if he is going to concede to the fact that he's not equipped to have these conversations, why is he having them constantly? Why am yeah, I always well, seeing him on the internet having well, these discussions? The, the thing is, if this discussion happened in public and it was a short discussion of, say, five minutes, I think our side would have lost. Because what he would have done is you would have tried to chronologically take him down the line. He would have changed the topic, mocked you a little bit, and it would have ended. And you wouldn't have had yeah. time to clarify it. So I think the reason why it went badly for him is that's what he's expecting. Let me come here. Let me just bring it back to what I'm comfortable with. Mock these guys a little bit and leave. But because yeah. it was longer and he had to justify each position, that's why he actually ended up losing. Yeah, and we didn't react as he expected. We didn't yeah. follow him down these red herring trails of his slogans and catchphrases that he uses. And I want to point out that this is not just merely about Aaron Rob. This is meant to show an example of internet atheism. It's indicative of the larger body of atheists that we meet online, that we frequently have discussions with. I'm not saying that they're all completely inept, but from my experience, generally they're so philosophically unsophisticated. They really have no idea what they're talking about and they come in with a very strong opinion, but they really don't even understand the basics of the subject matter. So that's really what we want to show is that even somebody popular like Arn Ra, and the reason why many atheists are like that is because he's the type of people that they're following. And so they then exhibit the same type of behavior and intellectual sophistication or lack thereof when it comes to these topics. That's a great point you just made, Jake. That's a really great point that it's like a contagious, it's like Corona. Yeah. So they have this very, um, this very bad attitude of uh, straw manning other people and just, you know, having these pre-prepared sound bites and catchphrases. And then what happens is because they're popular, it just spreads like Corona and everybody else starts, starts doing the same thing. And I believe, I mean, especially this particular, um, you know, a discussion that you had uh, with him, I think it's going to rattle a lot of atheists. I think they're going to lose a lot of certainty. Um, I, I've, I've actually met somebody who or met online somebody who they saw a discussion between a Muslim and an atheism and they got rattled. They actually made them leave atheism because a lot of it is glass and smoking mirror, uh, like smoke and mirrors type of thing. Right. And it's just about breaking that 
that spell, right? Breaking the spell. And when you break the spell, everyone's like, oh, the emperor has no clothes. You know? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Uh, I, I just wanted to make one last point about about the because you were talking about the philosophical uh, the philosophical side of things and how he's not aware of them. One of the points in the debate, and you guys can check it out, that really shows this is how he tried to make the idea of a le of leprechauns analogous to the existence of God. So yeah. this is the problem here. If you're coming to discuss the existence of God and you have leprechauns in your mind, and we just jump straight to the topic of whether God exists, and you're like, give me the evidence. You have leprechauns in your mind. I have something completely different. So I have to actually explain to you what God is. It, yeah. it's, it's, it's almost because you think God is analogous to leprechauns. You don't even don't know, know what the topic of the discussion is. You're not familiar with, with, with the basic uh, understanding of, of, of uh, you know, certain theistic conceptions of God. So that's why it needs to be breaking down. And it was very clear from our responses to this whole leprechaun analogy that he didn't really know what he's talking about. And he got cornered there too. So yeah, so... so uh, um, yeah, generally, I think this is an approach we should have to 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 these kinds of discussions. Not, it's, it's, it shouldn't be just a shouting match where, like, you know, who gets louder. Try to break down the person's epistemology down and, and try to get them to justify their position uh, just yeah. as much as you have to justify yours. Do you mind if I just add something to that as well? So one of the uh, – I get – us as Duarte, we get emails quite a lot. And um, it's usually of young people that are just scouring the internet and they, they come across Tafsir al Aran Ra. And like they're, they're like, oh, subhanAllah, this guy is so confident. Oh, he's shaking my foundations. And and they'll send you these emails. Half of the time, it's because one of these guys has, has said something very unconsequential. Like it's it's such a secondary issue in terms of the foundation of the deen and whether or not it should affect your iman. And they just, they talk about it very confidently, very brashly. Um, often the people that they engage with, are, uh, you know, maybe not even capable of having these discussions themselves. And they see the defeat of a particular Muslim um, as reason to say that the Islam has been defeated itself, rather than it just being the inadequacy of a particular interlocutor and the failing of that person rather than of Islam as a whole. So my advice here would be if, if you're one of these type of people, that when you look at something and you see someone lose in a debate, um, you know, like a, a Muslim interlocutor, like, comes up against Aaron Ra and he does this screaming thing that he, he does and he's like, no, show me the evidence and he gets all sweaty and red. Like, don't be pulled by that kind of rhetoric. It's 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 inconsequential. And half of the time, like I say, most of the things that you're getting emailed with, it's like, well, even if you didn't have the answer to this, why would that affect your belief in God? Yeah. Especially if you've got proper foundations. You've you've come to the belief in um, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that you, you understand he's one, the, the need for revelation, all of these things. Um, and you're asking me about some proper random that, that's just got nothing to do with any of the foundation. It's just a side issue. It, SubhanAllah. Just don't be taken by their uh, their brashness. They're throwing their weight around the fact that they've got like a, a horde of atheist fans behind them liking their videos and clapping their hands. And SubhanAllah. It's, yeah. Yeah, it's a very good point. Uh, you know, we can easily... Uh, see it as an avalanche when it's simply a snowball <laughs> with, yeah. a, with, with a massive, you know, sort of camera focus on it. So, Jazakallah Khair, guys. Great work. Um, I'm looking forward to other guests. I think you should invite some some of these other atheists, online atheists, on um, uh, the podcast. Uh, just to the end, tell us a little bit about the podcast, what the purpose is, and what the plans are for the future, inshallah. Yeah. So, I mean, the plans for the future, we try to invite guests on every now and then, like we did with Arn Ra. Maybe we'll be able to get some uh, more atheists on. Um, I don't know. I don't know if people are going to be so eager to come on after they saw what happened, but inshallah. <laughs> but usually, you know, our podcast is mainly dealing with um, things related to science and philosophy. We talk about Christianity, Islam, uh, atheism. We usually introduce a topic for about 30 minutes amongst ourselves. We invite callers to come on, you know, address us either with comments or questions, and we try to deal with them the best way we can. Um, so, yeah, inshallah, hopefully we'll have more people on in the future, and maybe we'll produce. Oh, we lost him. Yeah, we lost him. He so, said maybe we'll produce more content. Maybe. Yeah, but yeah, no. So inshallah, the, the, the best way you could help us with doing that, if you're watching this now, go search Thought Adventure Podcast. Um, 
inshallah, the SC Dawa will put the, the links in the description as well. But just subscribe to that and help share our videos. Um, mainly because obviously the more exposure this particular channel gets, um, the more likely we'll have engagement coming on, uh, the more variety in terms of the people that jump on during our call-in shows, um, and things like that. We're, we're relatively small at the moment. We've got, I think, 2,000 subscribers. 2,000 so plus, yeah. Yeah, around the 2,000 mark. Um, and obviously your engagement in there is going to help it with the algorithms. So liking our content, uh, this obviously goes for SD as well, liking the content, sharing it on your social media, commenting and engaging in the comments. Um, all of this really does help um, a channel to grow. Um, and inshallah, the, the, the main emphasis and aim of the channel itself is just to have um, a, a, a different tone in terms of the discourse. We, we don't want this um, sort of battle uh, analogy. We, we like to, and as if you watch the Aaron Ra discussion with Brother Abdul Rahman and Jake and Sharif, you'll see that the, the tone is very relaxed, it's very professional, um, and it's very cordial. And that's the, the whole goal of this, is to have really good, wholesome discussion um, that really focuses on the points themselves and not getting into these screaming matches. And when they start to look like they're going to happen, to try and tone it down or calm it down, like Brother Abdul Rahman uh, did very well. Uh, when he was responding to Aaron Ra's uh, little hissy bit. Absolutely. Yeah. for that, guys. I mean, what comes to mind is the atheist experience, uh, a Muslim version of it, except that it's it's not full of sophistry, it's full of philosophy, and it's a lot more civil, right? And it's a lot more cordial, like you said, you said. But we should really have things like this. I'm really looking forward to the great stuff, inshallah, that you guys are going to be producing. So head over to Thought Adventure Podcast, subscribe, comment, share, like. And if you haven't seen it already, go back and watch this discussion. Inshallah. So, Jazakallah khair for joining. Sadly, well, yeah. he has left us. But inshallah, we can have him back in the future oh, yeah. sometime. Uh, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum.